So in the last uh, lecture, we were thinking about curve fits, so best fit uh, functions that we picked. Uh, the one thing to observe from that process is that uh, these best fit functions didn't necessarily go through any of the data points. Now, one of the things we might start thinking about is maybe I want to pick a function that actually goes through all the data points. So we're going to talk about polynomial fitting. And the polynomial fits here are no longer going to be best fit. They're actually going to go through all the data points, uh, as well as the concept of what's called a spline. Splines are actually uh, incredibly important. They're heavily used in computer graphics uh, for taking data and generating smooth curves through uh, complicated data sets. So we're going to talk about both of those. And let's, give, let's start with the concept idea first. So let's cut over here back to the fresh paint. And if you remember, I had uh, a set of dots here. And what we did previously is we started thinking about this and drawing the best line through here. But potentially, one of the things I might want to do is I want to say, well, actually, I want a line that doesn't just have a trend through it. I want a line that actually uh, goes through all this data. And so I'm going to try to do this in the best way possible. So I might do something like this. I want this line here. It's going to go through all the data. So notice, this is a very different concept than what we were doing before. This thing here now isn't a simple polynomial, simple line, like a quadratic or a line or even exponential. Now this thing here takes on, uh, the error in this case is absolutely zero because you actually go through every single point. Okay? But there are problems with this method, which I'm going to show you. And part of the problems with this are simple observations. Okay? So suppose I have n points. So I might have endpoints going through here. And then I can start asking questions like, for instance, a line is ax plus b. So it's a first degree polynomial, just a line. Uh, so when I think about uh, a polynomial degree, when I think of degree one, I think about a line. When I think of degree two, I think about a parabola. When I think about degree three, then you're starting to get this cubic. And in fact, whatever the degree of the polynomial is, you notice that there's, if this is n, there's n minus 1 turning points. Okay, so this polynomial has to turn here and here. So as I get all the way up to here, there are n minus 1 turning points. And one of the things that happens is suppose I have 100 points, that means it's got to take 99 turns to fit the data. And this generates a phenomenon called polynomial wiggle. And we're going to see examples of this when we apply the MATLAB to this in the next lecture. And what it does is it fits the data very well in the middle. And at the edges, you see huge fluctuations that are completely unreasonable. Okay? Part of what a data curve fit should do is give you something that looks fairly reasonable, like what we're looking at right here. Okay? And that's not what a polynomial fit will do for you. Okay? So this is going to be the concept. And there's going to be two ways to think about getting data through this line, or uh, uh, a line through this data. So one concept is the polynomial fit, which is say, if there's n points, then surely I can come up with an nth degree polynomial that will ensure that I go through every single one of the points. So that's option one. Option two is what splines do. What they say is, look, all I need is a local polynomial getting me from one point to the next. And what I really want to do with this is make it nice and smooth, make a really smooth, beautiful curve. So one of the things you know about derivatives is derivatives tend to tell you what the slope is. And so what the, the spline method does, it not only matches derivatives at every point, so in other words, the slopes are the same. So 
Clearly, the line goes through all the points, but at each point, the slopes are going to match, and not only the slopes, but the second derivative, the slope of the slopes. So it's going to be this very smooth structure through here. But the spline is only defined technically. There's one spline here, uh, one piece of the spline is here, one here, one here. Everywhere, it's a piecewise definition of what the best fit is. Now, part of the reason we want these values everywhere is that now we can do things like extrapolate and interpolate. So for instance, if this data was temperature over, over a course of a season, I might say, well, what was the temperature like right around here? Well, I don't have a data point for it. So I could either say, I don't know, I don't have any information, but you do have information, right? You see that I have some neighboring points and you want to figure out what's the way to give you the best answer to that. So ex, ex, uh, interpolation is to, there's various ways to do it. You could say take the average value between these two, or if you have a nice spline through there, you could just give you the spline value right there, right? So part of what you want to do is, once you have these curves, is to give you missing information. You want to interpolate values that you don't have. You can also do extrapolation, which is what was the, uh, what was the temperature down here somewhere? I don't have any data here, so it's extrapolating because it's not a point within the interval where I have data. That's a little harder than interpolation, but in any case, once I have a curve for this, I can start using my polynomial fit or my least square line fit to get values outside of the interval where I took data. Okay, so that's going to—that's the—that's the objective in all of this curve fitting is to be able to interpolate, extrapolate, get the trends out. Uh, and have simple formulas, hopefully, that can do that.